Okay. Um, at the moment, there's obviously a, a number of practices out there that are currently tendering for um, EU work through the OJU um, tender yeah. process. Um, when we trigger Article 50, are we expecting that that will immediately dry up, or will there be will that be part of negotiations that we can continue to, to tender for that kind of work? Well, the rules are the rules until they're not the rules. So, um, what the book says is that the rules apply until the 31st of March 2019. Um, what I don't think anybody quite understands is if this is a contract that starts on site on the 1st of March 2019 and runs for five years. Yes. Um, but I, I, I don't. I, I mean, I think the. The straightforward answer is that deals done before oh, the end will be, will, will, will be there because you have been appointed as a contractor and that's it. Uh, you'll have a contract and all, all and so on. I think the much more, um, I mean, a very important point is what happens on the 1st of April 2019 when um, um, an e, a, a UK contractor would be able to tender in the normal run of things, if, you know, if they... Uh, but they probably they won't get preferential treatment, and of course there might be a whole lot of things to measure in about tariffs and other other restrictions, mutual recognition of qualifications. I mean, yeah. will they be able to employ UK qualified architects to sign off stuff in Germany, which at the moment they can do, and vice versa? Okay. I mean that that sort of brings us to to the reverse argument as well, which is that if we no longer have to tender um, UK government contracts to EU members. Is that likely to create more opportunity for UK companies who currently feel that they're excluded against some of the big boys from Europe? Yeah, well, theoretically, um, I'm I'm not particularly aware of cases, but I'm sure there will be some. Um, but it's it's kind of the bottle of prosciutto uh, argument, isn't it? Uh, with Boris and the Italian Prime Minister, um, you know, the, we, you know, as, he's, as the Prime Minister, as the Italian Prime Minister said, um, uh, we lose one bottle of Prosecco, you lose 27, or, or words to that effect. Um, I mean, yeah. the opportunities for us mm. in in the. Yeah. 80% yeah. of the market is, uh, which we forego are greater than the ones that okay. we may f I mean, benefit from. Certainly and and I'm also, I think, I mean, the real life situation is that the huge majority of construction contracts are let to, to companies within that country. There's, there's, there isn't that much uh, swap over except on the really enormous contracts. Um, where it's worthwhile uh, an outside bidder um, you know setting themselves up and doing it I mean you know a block of flats in Berlin versus a block of flats in Sydney that, I mean nobody's interested in, sure. in doing that Okay, excellent. Um, moving on more specifically to, to my sort of specialist area and my column, should it, we, yeah, okay. we focus on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we've obviously spent decades harmonising harmonizing with the um, EU construction regulations. Yep. Um, we've only recently made the transition from British standards to Euro codes and said we're now no longer going to um, yep. uh, update those. Um, is it realistic to expect a transition of the kind that we're talking about um, with, with a hard Brexit within a two-year period? For example, will BSI still be able to harmonise with, with SEM? Yeah, well, I mean, um, the first thing to say is that technically the standards are not necessarily included in the Brexit stuff. There, There is... There are quite a lot of parallel organisations. I mean, Euratom is another yeah. one. Uh, and there's a long list, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, the European Space Organisation and so on, yeah. um, which are not. It's not compulsory that changes take place. But I think in a lot of them, that the, the, what is at risk is that we lose the capacity to influence the direction in which things move um, and we become um, bystanders to the evolution of standards and the direction of travel and I think 
um, again, in, in real life, um, especially in the contracting industry, um, if standards change and evolve at the European level, we will want to change ours to match them um, because the divergence becomes more and more of a problem uh, the further along you go. So, I, I mean, to, we are again, we're in uncharted territory, but um, the most likely thing is a loss of the capacity we've currently got to steer the way that things go. And I mean, I, I don't know how far this is national uh, hyperbole, but it, it's always been said that to a significant extent, the BSI standards turned into the Euro standards rather than we having to completely reconfigure ours in the light of theirs. So in the past, we have been if not the designers, we've been ma major influencers of the way that standards have evolved and the, the obvious likelihood is that that will drift further apart. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, on a similar uh, note, obviously we, we've been working hard to come up with common BIM standards. Yeah. Um, the government have insisted on the implementation of BIM on, on any contracts that the government have let. Um, in, in part because of a comparatively slow take-up within the UK. Yeah, yeah. If we lose our seat at the EU table, is that likely to, to continue? I suspect the answer is similar to the one you've just given. Yeah, well, it, it is. And I mean, I, uh, it's a long, long time since I sat at a drawing board. So long, I mean, I know nobody sits at drawing boards now. Um, but I mean, the industry is extremely slow moving when it comes to innovation and, um, you know, re re reluctant adopters um, and always grumbling. And I mean, what I've seen in the, in the, in the trade press, uh, not I have to admit the AJ, which I don't subscribe to, uh, and you don't give me a free subscription. Uh, we'll, the, we'll sort that. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, my, my serious point is that, I, I mean, I've seen that it's, um, it's been controversial within the industry, uh, whether it's worthwhile at all, uh, how far and how fast uh, movement should go. So, I mean, to some extent, this may be what the, I won't say the industry will have a grip of this, but I could imagine the more reactionary voices within the industry uh, saying to the government, well, we don't need to listen to this anymore. But I think that comes back to the, the basic argument about BIM, and that is, um, is it actually um, capable of improving construction okay. processes and performance? Okay. Which, reading, looking at it from outside, I think it is, but I think that's a, a technical debate for the yeah. industry to sort out. Okay. 